Hey folks, tis the season for hats, is it not? It's also good for a bad hair day. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is Tuesday, November 29th, and this is On Top and Hot, where we like to talk about hot OTC and penny stocks. I day trade them every single day, so I see a lot of things going on, and at the end of the day, I like to share a few of them with you. And I got one I'm really, really excited to talk to you about. Now, when I say I'm looking at OTC and penny stocks, I'm not stuttering in a different language. There is a huge difference. Penny stocks are on every single market. Any stock under five bucks is a penny stock. They all qualify, so it doesn't matter what market they're on. It's all about their price. Real easy definition. Now, most of the stocks we look at are on the OTC market because that's where you get your startups. That's where you get your real small prices that can move just a smidge and make some money for you. All that news right there, that comes from the OTC market. There's about a week's worth over there. The oldest is at the top. The newest is down there at the bottom. And that's prime news. That's interesting news. Mergers, acquisitions, deals that they're making, expansions, uplistings, bankruptcies, all that juicy stuff. So if you haven't got time to comb through the news, that's just not today's. That's about seven days worth right there. Take advantage of it. Now, when I'm doing my research, I do it here at the otcmarkets.com website, and so should you. Why go anywhere else looking for the milk than the refrigerator? You know it's there. That's all this site has is current information. It's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC, so there's no reason to go searching for information. And if per chance, because nothing's perfect, if you don't find it here, the internet's always out there. But wouldn't you like to get it right nine out of 10 times the first time you find it, rather than having to go through hundreds of pages looking for those 10 pieces of information? Oh God, start here, you'll thank me later. All right, let's take a look at the OTC market. Let's see how she finished today. This is actually the first time I've looked. We'll go ahead and refresh this, and we didn't get any bump at all. Doggone it. And everything is, oh, sadder than yesterday. Our dollar volume is at 1.5. I can't remember if we were 1.4 or 1.6 yesterday, but <laughs> we're right there still. Share volume, we're not moving off of the low six billions. We're now getting stuck there like we were stuck in the fives. And our trades, oh, come on. 250,000 has been our low. It's an average low, it's not the absolute floor. As you can see, we have come through it and are now down to 244,000. So it's getting slower, folks. Everything is still going downhill as far as the whole market is concerned. But there are always stocks that have got stories to tell and money to give away. We just got to be there to catch the train before it takes off. And boy, this first one has got its ticket already punched, and I'm going to share it with you right now. Ooh, look at that. Ah, I gave you a teaser hint. You ready? Let's go get some free money. Now, we all know I'm one for suspense. I like to keep you waiting sometimes to see what's going on, but I can't hold back this time. I am bringing the best I've got today right here in front of you. This is HNRC, Houston Natural Resources. This is under the radar, folks, but it shouldn't be. If you're an avid watcher of my videos, we covered this twice already. We covered it in July, and then we covered it in August, and now we're covering it again in November, December. Now, when we look looked at it in August, it was all about this spin out. They are an energy company and they've got these different subsidiaries and they want to take all their energy assets and spin them out. And they said they were going to do that in the last quarter of this year, but we didn't have a specific date. We didn't have any specific details. That was all we had. So I said, keep your eyes open and let's watch this for news. Well, <laughs> news came out in September, and I missed it. I don't know how, but I did miss it. And one of my viewers today was asking me a question about the company, and that's when I found the news, and it's like, oh my God, we got to do another show on this because the clock is ticking. December 16th is the deadline. You have to get your shares before December 16th to qualify for this dividend. So as I told you, the company is into energy. And these are their three subsidiaries here, and you can see the value of them. Cunningham Energy at 19 million, Houston Natural Resources at 18 million, and World Diversified Holdings at 53 million. And that's the one they're spinning out, World Diversified Holdings. 
Now there's no fresh news. There's no fresh filings. You're hearing about this because I'm bringing it up to you. They're not even talking about it on Twitter. I brought it up on Twitter. Matter of fact, I've been answering a lot of questions today because everywhere I posted it, people aren't buying it. Now, I don't mean they're not buying the stock. I mean, they don't believe it. They think it's BS. They think it's fake. They want to know how. So I've got a few pieces of information I'm going to share with you now so you can know it's real and cash in on this. So what was the relative volume around this ghost? Well, she's normally doing just under a quarter million shares, 220,000. Today, she only did 158,000 shares. Share structure on this company. I always go to unrestricted, right? And they're telling us that's 33 million. Down here in the float, they tell us it's 4 million. And for some reason, some people like to use that DTC number, which is at 18 million. Well, you know what? All three of them are wrong this time. Right there is the public float at 14.9 million, which wasn't any of those numbers right there. So at least you know what the float is for sure because that came out of their most recent financial. So we know it's factual and actual. Let's take a look over here at their financials, see what kind of money this company's making. Woo, over the last two years, they've doubled. Well, geez, they've been growing at jumps and bounds, haven't they? 565,000, remember those three zeros there, 3 million, 9 million, 18 million. So they are growing very quickly. And they're still doing pretty good. The first three quarters, they've got 5, 10, 11, 14 million. And what was it they did on the annual? 18. So they're on target right now. Maybe they'll do more. We've still got that last quarter to show up here. But to be completely honest with you, it isn't about the fundamentals of this company. The fundamentals actually have no play whatsoever. Yes, you got to buy the stock. And yeah, we'd like the stock to go up, which I think it's going to. I think when word gets out about this dividend, people are going to want to buy this stock because they want the free money. What free money am I talking about? Okay, okay, okay. Right here, folks. Uh, aha, I lost my page, but I found it. So this came out on September 28th. They tell us here that HNRC declares dividend date for asset spinoff to the shareholders. And this top paragraph has all the information we need. Houston Natural Resources today announced that it will spin off its non-energy assets to its wholly owned subsidiary, Worldwide Diversified Holdings, Inc., and then dividend them to their shareholders of record on December 16, 2022. That is called the record date, the cutoff date. You have to have your shares purchased before December 16th. The shares will be distributed to the company's shareholders upon effective registration statement. The company is anticipating the registration statement to be completed in the fourth quarter of 2022. We're in the last month. This is it. The transaction will provide for a dividend of $1.75 per share for every one share of HNRC held by the shareholders on the record date. There you go, folks. For every share you have on December 16th, you are going to get paid in December, sometime in the next two weeks, $1.75 for every single share you own. And if you bought them today, you got them for about 38 cents. That's about a 500% guaranteed increase on your investment. Boom. It's not an if, it's not an and, it's not an or, it's not a but. It is reality. It's going to happen. Now, I want to point out two other things here. First off, in this news press and the one that I was looking at in August, neither one of them ever mentioned the word uplisting or NASDAQ. You don't see uplisting here mentioned. You also don't see the word ticker, ticker change. Now, they do give us an abbreviation WDHI for World Diversified Holdings Incorporated, but nowhere do they say it's a ticker. What's my point? I don't think this is being spun out onto the open market. I don't think it's going to be a public company. What would happen is if they did spin it out onto the NASDAQ, we'd get free shares and then we'd have our investment from that. But 
This, I think, is going to be a private spin out, and they can't give us shares in the company, so they're going to give us a settlement payout. They're just going to pay us the value. Now, I tried to figure it out. It is a $53 million value, and I looked at the float. I looked at the outstanding shares. The float is about $14 million. The outstanding is roughly $50 million. I tried to divide it to see if I could figure it out. I couldn't figure the math out. But the fact is, it is happening. Whether it's going public or going private, really isn't our concern. The point is you're getting $1.75 non-negotiable for every single share you own of this stock. Now, I normally don't do this, but I found a podcast that came out here October 26th. This is a interview with the CEO of the company. And I've got just a few seconds here of him validating what I'm telling you. So rather than take it from me, you can take it from the CEO. Check this out business models are converting waste into energy. Uh, brilliant. I'm glad to hear that you have some exposure to that. And one of the last questions that I'll have, uh, is there anything you want these listeners to expect before the end of the year? Um, yeah, well, what we've previously announced is that we're looking to um, to spin off those assets for shareholders of dividend you know, um, in December. Um, and so we're looking to achieve that before the end of the year. Yes. Uh, we're also focused on on doing additional um, acquisitions and maybe completing um, the acquisition in Cunningham Energy as well as as a few other acquisitions that we're that we're working on. So there you go, folks. Right from his mouth to your ears, the CEO said, December is when they're doing a spin out. December is when they're paying out the dividend. Now I didn't mention the price, but come on, folks. This is real. Now, you need to buy your shares before December 16th. Whatever the price is, it doesn't matter. Now, I anticipate the price will probably go up. I think it's under the radar right now because there's no fresh news. There's nothing even on a Twitter account or anything like that. That came out October 26th, and we are here at November 29th. So nobody's paying attention to this. There's a lot of free money to be taken. There's not a limit. You can have as much as you absolutely want. Now, here's something most people don't know and this is going to freak you out but it's the truth december 16th is the date of record the cutoff date truth of the matter is after that date december 17th december 18th you could if you wanted to sell your shares in that company get your money back and you still qualify for the dividend you don't have to be holding your shares up to the X date, the date that they're paying out the dividend. You don't have to hold them from the record date to the X date. All you got to do is have them up to December 16th. Whatever you do with them after that is up to you. But you still get your free shares or your free money as it is in this case. Have I got your attention? All right, not that it really matters what the chart is doing because it has nothing to do with price activity, but you will be buying the stock, right? So you are gonna be invested in it. And I think if this catches wind with a lot of people who want free money, you know any of those kind of people? <laughs> This could surge. It could. So you could get a double bang for your investment here. God, I'm really excited about this one. Let's go take a look at that chart. So this is HNRC six month, four hour chart. And we're doing our charting on very good, Dave. It is think or swim. And where do we get it? Right though, it is TD Ameritrade. It's absolutely free. Just sign up for their free trading account. And all you gotta do is keep your account open to use it. It's just that easy. So I've got an average here where she's been bouncing off, coming back up. This is a point that I consider she needs to get above if she really wants to have a breakout. She's had a lot of runs and a lot of falling. We had a high bubble back here of 79 cents six months ago and a low bubble here of 15 cents uh, just at the end of June, the start of July. Nice pop there, huge run there. What was that for goodness sake? That went from 19 cents up to 59 cents. That was a 300% run in multiple days. Lots of volume. Speaking of lots of volume, we got it going on right now too. There is a lot of volume here. We are sitting on top of that 200 right now. Come on up, there you go. Perfectly sitting on it. So she could bounce. You can see she likes to bounce on her 200. There is a big bounce off that 200. Maybe it'll be like the long jump, you know, boing, boing, boing. Maybe we're getting some short ones here and maybe we're gonna get a real big one now. What do our technicals say? 
Eh, technicals don't agree with any big jump. They look like they're taking a breath, like they want to sit on their can for a while. The four hour doesn't look very strong. Let's come on down to that 20 day, one hour view. So she's been under a 200, except for that last breakout she had, which is the high. Uh, that is at 50 cents. That's where I've got my support line. She is way down here under her 200 on her one hour chart right now, looking like she's trying to get up on top of her nine and start moving up. We do have inclinations in our oscillators. Our tools down here, our MACD, looks like it's trying to turn back up. PPO has got the same thing. This is my percentage price oscillator. The MACD and the PPO are a lot alike. The MACD uses the whole price. The PPO, percentage price oscillator, uses a percentage of the price, right? And our RSI, though it is low at 44, is pushing up right now. Let's look at that five day, five minute. Doesn't look like she has a whole lot going on. I'm not going to say she's actually been consolidating here. There has been some price action, some jumps, some falls. She has got things going on. Looks like she could break the 50-day SMA here. Breaking that could give her enough uh, confidence to push to that 200-day here and fly. She could with the right catalyst. And do you think free money is the right catalyst? <laughs> Think about this, folks. You could get this, let's just say 40 cents. 40 cents, that's a $1.35 profit on every single share. That is over 320% gains just for holding your shares. Maybe this is up, maybe this is down. I can't imagine it going down, right? There should be some excitement. Tell your friends about it, tell your neighbors, tell other traders, this is free money all of us can get a hold of some. At least 14 million shares worth. Everybody else, sorry, you're too late. There you go, folks. HNRC, my home run for this video. Yeah. Ah, now here's a company we haven't talked about in a while. Remember Cartel? This is ticker KRTL, Cartel Holdings Group. They were a buzzing earlier when they were going through their reverse merger with Queench. This is a psychedelic slash cannabis biotech company. <laughs> they work out of South Korea. Now, not just out of South Korea, but with South Korea's support. They've actually got the government backing them up. They tell us right here that Cartel Biotech is a research and development company that has obtained a Ministry of Food and Drug Safety which was formerly known as the Korea Food and Drug Administration with the approval for study of psilocybin and CBD. They're using those ingredients, CBD, terpenes, and psychedelics to create new novel drugs to help people. And believe it or not, the country itself wants to be the first mover with these sort of drugs. So there is a lot of excitement going on with this right now. Now, there was no new news today. There were no new filings. All we got is a tweet from the company. Came out real early today. And it pushed the stock up to 0 0.0291, just under three cents with over 45% gains. They're on the pink tier in current. They've got those precious green ticks. I'm always telling you to look for. And they are still currently a shell company. They haven't launched their business yet, so they're not making any revenues yet. Now, what was the relative volume around that one tweet? Oh, pretty impressive. One tweet went from 150,000 to almost 1 million shares today. Not bad. Share structure. Unrestricted. Well, they're pretty close right now. We got 41 million here. The float says it's 43, but how do we ever know? Are either one of them even close? Jump into the most current financial disclosure. Normally can't find the float in a 10K or 10Q, but I can the disclosures. And here we are at 43.2 million. So this time Potluck had it down here under the float, 43.2 million shares. Financials, well, they are a shell company, so we should see zeros all the way across the board. Ooh, well, look at this. Somebody snuck some money in there. That's $160,000 remembering those three zeros. Now, that's up to June. Did they continue making money or is that a freak? And speaking of that, look at that. It didn't cost them anything for that money. All right, got my curiosity up. Matter of fact, I've already got this open. We could jump over to disclosures, open up their most current financial. And I'm just going to scroll down to the numbers and see if they're making any money right now. Where are the numbers? Okay. 
Let's just take a peek since we're here. Total assets, they had nothing in December, nine months ago or 10 months, 11 months ago. Now they've got $351,000 and total liabilities, $47,000. So they've got more assets than liabilities. Revenue, this is September folks. 162,000, another 162,000. So they had money in June, they've got money in September. That shelf status should be falling off. Any time now, that should be falling off. And that's got to be another reason to have this stock jump. Investors love seeing their companies lose the shell because they're making money. That means they're in the race. Are there any other disclosures that we could take a look at over there? No, they've got nothing here since 2004. And I don't believe there's any news that's recent. I mean, they've got lots of news here. Don't get me wrong. Uh, let me see. Cartel International and ICANN Ventures to launch cannabis education. Uh, Cartel International and Cannabis Global form Global Strategic Alliance. This is just last month. So they're doing a lot. But what's got it running today? Why should we be looking at it? Urgh. Over here at Twitter, we have got a tweet from them 21 hours ago. The other one was nine days ago. The one nine days ago says, attention shareholders, amongst other deals, we are looking with our attorney to clear the shell status. Oh, see, look at that. So they are looking to get rid of that shell status and they said they are looking at other deals with an S. That's always nice to see they're working with more than one thing. But the tweet that came out today, attention shareholders, we are awaiting for approval to release a PR with a top tier pharmaceutical company. Well, it seems like an incomplete sentence to me. PR is a press release. They're about ready to release a press release once they get approval from whomever about a top tier pharmaceutical company. Well, it sounds like good news. That's all we know. And everybody wants to get in before it's announced. And that's why the stock was moving today. And it's probably gonna move tomorrow. That's just a second hand guess. But what do you think? Let's go take a look at that chart. So we are looking at KRTL. That is a six month, four hour chart, but it doesn't actually cover six months. This starts the day that Cartel got their ticker and that was on May 27th. And though it was a day of celebration, having your own ticker on the stock market, the stock itself was not happy. It dropped from six cents down to a penny. Oh my God, she did jump back up here. This seems to be about the area she likes to sit in. She rolls around and comes right back down to here. And now she's sitting at a new lower support down in this area. Our volume has been pretty steady all through this region, but it isn't helping much. Our technicals, well, we got an imminent crossover right now on our PPO. We need to get that blue line on top of the pink. That'll give it some power. We just had a crossover on our MACD. You can see it right there. And it is trying to get over our signal line. That would be another power move. And our RSI is pushed right up to 55. The bare minimum I want to see the RSI on. So she is warm on her technicals on the four hour chart. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Well, look, there is our support on the low end. There is our support on the high end. And she's stuck in a channel right in between those two. She's been rolling across the lower section, hit a low bubble, jumped right back into it, came up here, almost tapped it, hitting her high bubble of three and a half cents. And it's kept most everything she put out there that day and is sitting on top of her nine day SMA right now. All of our technicals are very warm, but they show indecisiveness right now. Looks like she's thinking it over. What is she gonna do? Our five day, five minute. All right, so she started the day off here, closing yesterday just over two cents, and then opening at two and a half cents. So we had some pre-market activity there. That was about a 25, is that right? Yeah, 25% gain from yesterday's close to the bell. And then from that two and a half cents, she went to three and a half cents. What is that, maybe 80% gains. She did drop, bounce back up, dropped, and she's been holding that, and she's right on top of her 20-day SMA, looking secure. I mean, she doesn't look like she wants to come down, honestly. However, the technicals do show that. They do show the PPO is pushing down, or MACD has had a crossover pushing down, RSI is pushing down. So even though I see a bounce on the 20, the technical say there's more pressure on top of her, so she could come all the way down to her 50-day SMA. That's the lowest I would think she would go. Cartel, 
They got news coming out. What's it going to be? What's the big tier pharmaceutical company? Are they going to make money from the steel? They're going to get rid of that shell status. They told you they're working on that. These are all big things that can make this stock move. And a lot of people were watching this earlier. I'm sure a lot of people are going to start watching it again. KRTL, get ready for the bounce. Now here's a company that's been catching a lot of attention, not just today, but for many days. And she's had no new news, no new filings, no tweets. Now they did have news come out on the 21st of this month and the 4th. And both pieces of news basically are working together. And that's all I see. And it is great news. And considering there's nothing else on the table, I have got to presume that's why this is running right now. She finished today at 0 .099 cents on the money with 61% gains. They're on the middle tier of the OTC. This is the QB. That B stands for better. I'm being serious. That's what the QB stands for, the better tier. They call it better because you have to audit your financials to exist on this tier. A licensed CPA looks at the numbers. They're actual and factual by the time we get them. All those disclosures, those are just the numbers being passed on to us by the management. And with all good intentions, they could be making mistakes or worse yet. So that just makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've got a verified profile and transfer agent, look good, and they've got independent directors. Now, you must have independent directors if you're going to uplist. They probably used them coming from the pink up to the QB. And if they have any plans of going to the QX or the NASDAQ, they're going to have to have them then as well. But if they don't have plans on uplisting, you really don't need the independent directors. And they're keeping them. So, maybe they've got plans. So, what does Clean Vision Corporation do? Well, they tell us here that they identify leading companies and technologies that are focused on clean energy and sustainable solutions, in a nutshell. So what was the relative volume around a company that had no tweets, no news, no filings, no catalyst whatsoever? Pretty good. <laughs> Went from 3.5 million to almost 58 million shares without any catalyst. Share structure. All right, we've got two different numbers here, but they're close, 310. 302, jump into the financial disclosure, and we got 306.2 million. So we're right in the middle, <laughs> right between them. So it's not a great float. It's not super duper ridiculously high, but it's not a low float either. 306 million. Financials for this company. Well, we got nothing on the annual and the quarterly. No, we got nothing there either. Now, I did jump into that quarterly report where I just showed you the float. I did dive down to see what revenues they might have had in the last one because this is just June. They did just put theirs in for September. There was nothing there. They're putting money out. They got to pay the bills, pay themselves. So yeah, they're in business, but they're not making any money yet. Why it doesn't say shell company over here, I don't know, or at least shell risk. In either case, there is no revenues coming in right now. Their financials are all caught up. There is their last quarterly report for September if you want to dive into it. And they've got no other financials, I mean uh, SEC filings to look at. So let's take a look at the news. See what they've got going on over here. Most current piece of news just came out on the 21st and the 4th. The two I want to share with you. So we're going to jump into that first one that came out on November 4th. Clean Vision Corporation today announced its wholly owned subsidiary, Clean Seas Inc., has signed a memorandum of understanding with Arizona State University to establish a waste plastic to clean hydrogen innovation and conversion facility in the Phoenix, Arizona area. CS has established Clean Seas Arizona to source waste plastic feedstock from the Phoenix metro area and adjacent municipalities and work towards making it an anchor for a network of clean hydrogen hubs located in various locations across the globe with the eventual goal of diverting thousands of tons of plastic waste per day from landfills and incinerators and diverting it to facilities. The project is intended to co-generate new recycled content plastics and CS branded clean hydrogen aqua H. CSA currently intends to invest at least 50 million in the project which it anticipates will divert more than 850,000 tons of plastic waste over the 25-year lifespan.
And then the news that came out on November 21st, kind of the same thing, but more of it. Clean Vision Corporation today announced its wholly owned subsidiary, Clean Seas Inc., the same one, has signed letters of intent with Mac Valley to establish a co-located Clean Seas facility in central Massachusetts, which will divert post-industrial and ocean-bound plastic from landfill and incineration and convert it into precursors for new plastics, ultra-low sulfur fuels, pyrosis oils, and Clean Seas branded hydrogen Aqua H. Now here's the thing, it's not just one facility. Mac Valley purchased this site earlier this year and will establish their own complementary recycling facility at the location with revenue operations planned to begin the first quarter of 2023. Mac Valley will source the plastic feedstock for both facilities. And there's more information here if you want to dive into it. So that's what you got. You've got two facilities, actually three, going up that are going to take all this waste plastic that we've been just throwing around everywhere in landfills and in the ocean, and they're going to change it into new plastics, new fuels. They're going to put it to use. And I guess that's a big deal because the stock has been running and running and running. Let me show you. Let's go look at that chart. Well, how do you like them cookies? Nice chart, huh? This is ticker CLNV, six month, four hour. You can see she's got a big bowl going there. She was falling for most of this time, hit this low bubble of about a penny, started working her way up, has really picked up the momentum. Look at the volume coming in right now, folks. It is so strong. You can't make any doubt of what's going on. She is rocketing to the moon. Today, she hit that high bubble of 0 0.0924. Our technicals, every single one of them is going to the moon. I got to scroll down just to see what the ceiling bubbles are reading. Our RSI is up there at 88 on the four hour chart. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour view. Oh, that's beautiful. She has been above the 200 all 20 days. Now she was working it out here for about a week and a half, but then she started growing here for the last, what, nine, 10 days. She's been picking up momentum and she is starting to go parabolic, is she not? And even our technicals are going parabolic. All of them, every single one of them is all pointing up right now. You cannot lose if your oscillators are pointing up. You just can't lose. Five day five minute. Look at this, folks. Now, I do want to back up here. Let's back up and let's take a look at the fourth. There is the fourth. The fourth is right here. This is when the news came out, that first piece of news we read. She fell on that news, fell the day after and the next day. Three days of falling on the news that they had made a deal uh, for that first plastic place in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And then you had a piece of news here on the 11th, right here. Nothing. Absolutely dead to the news, dead to the news, and then a little bit of bump a day later, and then it fell, and then, then a pop. Nothing here is making sense. This is all we've got sitting on the table. They didn't react to it when it came out and now they're reacting? Well, I haven't found anything else, so that's got to be all they're doing. Now, maybe someone did some uh, numbers. Maybe there was a document that came out from a court. I don't know, but you can see that from that jump right there, she has decided to start climbing. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days, and the volume is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Our 200-day SMA is turned up. Every single SMA is in the right place. The price is floating on our nine-day SMA, barely ever breaking it. I mean, it's light as helium and floating up. We are on our one hour chart and everything looks great. Back to that five minute. Folks, she looks like she is still going to climb. I mean, the, it's, it's a delayed reaction but by all means, the news came out on the 4th and the 21st, and this is the 29th, and she has been climbing for the last 10 days without any new information, and the volume today was incredible, the strongest day of any day. Now, right now, we've had a drop. She came up, she's taken a drop. Now, you can see she has dropped. She's pretty much hanging on to her 50-day SMA when she comes back down. And here she 
didn't even hit the 50. Right now, she is far above the 50. She's way up here. Now, she could bounce off of this, but out of habit, I would expect her to come down to that 50. At this point, it's just a little over eight cents, and the price right now is at nine cents. So it could come down another penny and bounce. The way this is running, it looks very confident. It looks like it wants to ride that 50-day SMA. It has been running for 10 days on old news, and there's nothing else on the table. I don't see any reason why she would want to stop. But of course, you can't go on forever. So keep your eye on the technicals. The technicals so that she is coming down right now. But as I said, she could easily bounce like she did here. We had a big drop here. She came down and didn't even touch the 50. Just came down to her 20 and took off again. She's on her 20 right now. So keep an eye on CLNV. She's giving away money every single day. She is at a high right now. I'm not crazy about buying anything on a high, but if you always use that as your excuse, you'd have probably never got into Netflix, right? Hey, you're still here. So am I. I got some goodies for you since you're here. These are some leftover stocks that we didn't have time to talk about, so I'm just gonna give you the ticker and the reason they're probably running. I've been looking at them, other investors are looking at them, I thought you might want to look at them too. First one here is BRBL, Brewbilt. Brewbilt makes beers. They just got their brewery up and running in June, I believe it was, and started getting some contracts, getting their beers out there. Then they got some big contracts, one from Albertsons and one from Safeway. Then their last piece of news is what really got everybody wound up. They tell us now they are targeting $20 million as their annual sales. You got to remember, they just started making money in June. And they have a $100 million in potential franchise discussion going on right now. So this has got everybody worked up. Another one. This is one you haven't heard of. There's no news. OTIC, Autonomy Inc. This was running today and I was searching everywhere. Now there was a lot of people talking about it on Twitter as being really shorted. Uh, people are watching some big orders come in. You could see them coming in if you were monitoring it. The only thing I could find was this 8K that came out on the 18th and it was a letter from the NASDAQ. It told them that their price was under 10 cents for 10 days in a row. Naughty, naughty, we're gonna kick you off the NASDAQ. Literally. 10 cents for 10 days. Well, they had to appeal it. I haven't seen anything about the appeal, but it went over 10 cents a few days ago, and ever since it went over 10 cents, it's picking up momentum. You may want to catch a free ride on this. By the way, a NASDAQ stock has to get over a dollar eventually. They can't stay under a dollar for too long or they'll get kicked off. So there you've got some room to grow, right? 22 cents up to a buck. Last one. This has been running for a while, folks. C-O-S-M. The other one, actually, is C-O-M-S. Honestly, you can type in either one of them. Uh, one has got news, one has got filings. I can't remember which is which, but these two have been running for a while. Every single day, I do believe it's com, C-O-M-S, which is up at the top of my double zero one to $3 search. I do every single morning looking for those stocks running. And that has been up at the top many, many days with the strongest volume, pre-market, pre-market. This is a NASDAQ stock. Well, well, going back over to COMS, that is a NASDAQ stock. That means you can trade it before the bell. And a lot of these stocks are running hard before the bell, harder than they do in the day. And you don't need any special qualifications. You don't need any special permission. Just get in there and trade. Only thing you gotta remember is you gotta add extension to your order. It's not a day order. It's a day plus extension, or good till canceled plus extension, or just extended hours, whichever it is. Remember to put that in and you can trade it as well. Have fun. I think these are some pretty hot stocks we just considered. CLNV, that's in an uptrend. Been running for 10 days, not two or three. No new news, no new filings, just moving on its own inclinations. That's what we're looking for, stocks that are climbing, not falling. So CLNV, it deserves your attention, a little of it. Then you got Cartel. Cartel has been teasing us. They know there's a bunch of us that have been waiting for information from this company. So what do they do? They tweet that some information is going to be coming out in a PR once it's approved. And they're going to name a top tier pharmaceutical company, which we're presuming they're making a deal with. So who's the company and what's the deal? 
You think that's going to be enough to keep the price moving up, all that hype tomorrow? I think so. And what about when that PR comes out? Yeah, I think that's going to keep this stock moving as well. So cartel, don't take your eyes off of it. Don't blink. But this one, folks, HNRC, we know what that's about. Free money. Free money. $1.75 for every single share of stock you own. Whether you buy it at 38 cents, 50 cents, 80 cents, or a dollar, you're still making a heck of a profit. Now, there's no need to wait too long. December 16th is the cutoff. You must have your shares by that date. And every single share you own will be multiplied by $1.75, which they will pay you. And they're not taking your shares. You get to keep your shares. So I would expect the price to be up when everyone gets excited and wants to get that free money. They're going to want to buy these shares. There's 14 million of them. This should go up in value. So by the time we sell, and you can sell after December 16th, just hold them till December 16th. After that, doesn't matter. You'll still get your $1.75 per share. So we're going to be able to sell our stock and get that money back as well. So I see this as a win-win-win. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.